Hi, I'd like to um, give you an example to show you how to calculate uh, saturated water flow through a horizontal soil column using Darcy's Law. This should help you get an understanding, better understanding for Darcy's Law uh, and how we can apply it. So imagine uh, in this example that we have a horizontal soil column as shown here. And on the left hand side of the column we have a uh, water reservoir that is um, 100 centimeters above the center line of the soil column. So this uh, upside down triangle here on the left hand side indicates uh, that the uh, water level there is at atmospheric pressure. That reservoir is connected to the soil column and the water flows through the soil column and then on the right hand side uh, the column is connected to another reservoir of water also at atmospheric pressure and the free water surface there is 60 centimeters above the center line of the column. The length of the soil column in this case is 50 centimeters and the hydraulic conductivity is 10 centimeters per hour. Now you'll recall that for Darcy's Law we have the flux Q is equal to the hydraulic conductivity multiplied by the hydraulic gradient which can be written as the difference in uh, total water potential divided by the length of the column. So our first step in solving this problem is to find that difference in the total water potential across the column, find delta psi t. And then the second step uh, in the problem is to calculate the flux Q. Now for this problem and most other water flow problems, uh, I recommend that you use a simple table to calculate the difference in soil water potential. So let's call the entrance of the soil column point A and let's call the exit here point B. And we want to calculate the gravitational potential and the pressure potential and the total potential at those two points A and B. And that will allow us to calculate the delta psi t that we need for Darcy's Law. Now before we can calculate gravitational potential we always have to define a reference elevation and we can choose that anywhere we want but in this case it's convenient to choose the reference elevation as the center line of the column because then both points A and B are at the reference elevation so they have a gravitational potential of zero centimeters that's convenient the pressure potential at A is 100 centimeters of positive pressure because it's connected to this free water surface uh, 100 centimeters above. Likewise the pressure potential at B is 60 centimeters it is also connected uh, to that free water surface 60 centimeters above point B. So then our total potential at A would be 100 centimeters and our total potential at B would be 60 centimeters. So then our difference in total potential across the column is simply equal to 40 centimeters. Now we're ready uh, to calculate the flux. So writing Darcy's Law we know the flux Q is equal to the conductivity which in this case is 10 centimeters per hour. I have the decimal there to show that uh, this measurement has uh, 10 significant or two significant digits the one and the zero both being significant. I plug in a, a delta T which is 40 centimeters and the length of the column which in this case is 50 centimeters I'll assume both of those uh, also have two significant figures and then we can right away calculate the flux uh, which in this case turns out to be 8.0 centimeters per hour. So that's one simple uh, straightforward way uh, to use Darcy's Law to calculate saturated water flow through soil.